Hi, it's Dr. Elisha Van Dusen at New Hope Chiropractic. Gout is a type of inflammatory arthritis. It's more commonly diagnosed among men. And the prevalence of this condition is growing in the United States today. What used to be found almost exclusively in men over 40 now actually affects both the young and the old, men and women, thin and overweight people. And it was nicknamed the disease of kings in the past. It was uh, given this name because it usually affected men who overindulged in rich foods and alcohol, like King Henry VIII of England, Alexander the Great, Michelangelo, Christopher Columbus, and Ben Franklin were just some of the historical figures who suffered from gout. The prevalence of gout has risen over the last two decades, now affecting 4% of Americans, which equates to about 8.3 million people. Researcher, researchers associate rising prevalence to the increasing number of people who are overweight and hypertensive and eat lots of rich foods. While it's a common condition, most doctors and researchers have not come to a consensus about treatment. And what makes it difficult is the relationship between doctors, lobbyists, and big pharma as well. So if steering clear of long-term drug use is your goal, then there are definitely several strategies that you can use to reduce, reduce the risk of gout and flare-ups. Gout basically is a, a painful condition and it generally affects the big toe, that's where you see it first, but it can also attack the ankle, the knee, the hips, the wrist, and the elbow as well. And the pain arises because of uric acid crystals that get deposited in the joint space. And these sharp crystals are like little needles. They irritate and inflame the tissue at the joints and that triggers inflammation and swelling. Your body, as it breaks down purines found in food, ure uric acid is formed. And uh, usually purine rich foods cause this formation of uric acid. These are meats, gravies, beer, anchovies, mackerel, fish in general, sardines, herring, um, things of that nature. Uh, normally uric acid dissolves in the blood and it's filtered through the kidneys and then it passes out through the urine. But when enough uric acid is not filtered and eliminated through the urine, that's when you start getting hyperuricemia. It's when these, these crystals develop and um, they precipitate out of the solution and become these little crystals that concentrate around the joints, like the big toe. So, um, while uric acid is formed through the metabolism of these purines, sugar, and more specifically fructose, which is sugar from fruits, this increases your risk of developing gout. So, researchers that have been studying this condition demonstrated that fructose increase, increases the formation of uric acid and also increases the risk of high blood pressure, which is a risk factor for gout. Fructose also reduces the excretion of uric acid, so it, it builds up in the, the system. Uric acid is a byproduct of fru fructose metabolism, and in fact, fructose typically generates uric acid within minutes of ingestion. Another common substance that elevates uric acid is beer. So if you drink a lot of beer, that can increase the symptoms of gout. Interestingly, uric acid functions both as an antioxidant and also as a prooxidant once it's inside your cells. If you lower uric acid a lot, you lose its antioxidant benefits. But if your uric acid levels are high or too high, then it increases significantly inside your cells as well, and then it can be a prooxidant. So typically your uric acid should be between 3 and 5.5 milligrams per deciliter. So your risk of developing gout is not only based on the amount of uric acid that's produced in your body, but also uh, your body's ability to excrete it, filter it, filter it and excrete, excrete it out the bloodstream. And you have to look at the development of uric acid and also your body's ability to filter and get it out of the body in fighting this disease. So um, there are typically four stages of pain with gout. Um, the initial stage is typically asymptomatic. You don't have any overt symptoms. And that's hyperuricemia. 
Elevated levels of uric acid in the bloodstream are present, but crystal formation in the joints is not, so you don't have the pain yet. And um, while the prevalence of gout is 4%, the prevalence of the hyperuricemia is actually slightly higher, more than 21% of the population, because uh, it hasn't been diagnosed yet. People don't even know they have it at that point. During the acute stage, then people experience a sudden onset of pain and swelling in a joint, like the big toe. The inflammation, pain, and swelling usually strikes at night. An attack may be triggered by the use of alcohol or presence of another illness. And the pain, swelling, and inflammation peak quickly, and then they go away after three to 10 days, even without treatment. First attacks the shortest, and later attacks can last longer and occur more frequently as time goes on. The third stage of the condition is called um, interval or intercritical gout, and this is the period between attacks during which you have no symptoms again. Unfortunately, some people experience the most disabling stage that can take up to 10 years to develop. Chronic tophaceous gout can cause permanent damage to the affected joints and sometimes to the kidneys as well. And it's characterized by chronic arthritic changes, aching joints, and tophi, or basically lumps of the urate crystals in the soft tissue. And that's where making good lifestyle choices, using appropriate treatments, and changing your lifestyle can reduce your risk of reaching this stage. So doctors, medical doctors can agree on long-term drug treatment usually, um, which um, medications to use and also how long to use them. Common medications that are used for this condition are things like allopurinol, probenicid, colchicine, and fibroxostat. And side effects from these medications are pretty severe um, in a lot of cases. They include joint pain, flu symptoms, reduced liver function, anorexia, weight loss, pyritis, or basically itchy skin, renal failure, kidney failure, in other words, anxiety, chest pain, rashes, hives, confusion, sudden numbness or weakness on one side, nausea, low-grade fever, dark urine, sudden headache, flushing, constipation, easy bruising, stuffy nose, shortness of breath, fast irregular breathing, puffiness around the eyes, changes in skin color, and bloody urine. Uh, ironically, some of the conditions that you're trying to, symptoms of the gout you're trying to treat. So, um, you can actually reduce gout naturally in many ways as well, which does not involve these negative side effects, and that's um, what I generally recommend um, doing first. Um, reduce fructose is one thing you can do. Products containing high fructose corn syrup are a huge, huge risk factor. In one study, men who drank two or more soft drinks a day had an 85% higher risk of developing gout. So it doesn't matter where you get the fructose from. Even fruit juices and fructose-rich fruits can also increase your risk of developing gout or trigger a flare-up. Reduce your intake of fructose by reducing or eliminated, eliminating processed foods, soda. Um, just read your labels so you know what you're eating. So keep your total fructose intake down to maximum of 25 grams a day. Body weight within normal limits is another thing to really focus on in terms of um, curbing gout because one risk factor is obesity. In increasing the waistline actually of people in the U.S. is a huge factor be behind the prevalence of gout. And data also demonstrates a high prevalence of people suffering from diabetes, insulin resistance, obesity, hypertension, heart disease, which is also a risk factor with gout. So watch your weight. Limit your alcohol. Alcohol is a strong risk factor. Um, I think it's best reserved for when you've achieved optimal wellness and don't have the disease conditions such as gout, diabetes, or other signs of ill health. And then use it sparingly or in moderation. Exercise daily um, is an important thing as well. If your joints are in pain or when it might cause further injury, then it's Typically not recommended, but once gout is under control, exercise is a necessary and important adjunct to a healthier lifestyle. It'll even help prevent further attacks by increasing circulation and normalizing your uric acid levels. And uh, does that 
primarily by normalizing uh, the insulin levels. Also take antioxidants to fight inflammation. Tart cherries contain two powerful compounds. Um, both of these compounds slow down the enzymes which help relieve and prevent gout and arthritis. Strawberries help a lot as well, decreasing the uric acid. Fresh fruits not available. One option is to purchase frozen or canned tart cherries or strawberries. Organic is obviously best. Look for canned cherries that are packed in non-BPA lined cans. And then also um, chiropractic will help you have a better um, nervous system and also will help your joints, help your joints move better. So that decreases inflammation and also helps you to exercise more to um, attain a, a healthier lifestyle to um, decrease the symptoms associated with gout. So, um, and uh, as always, before discontinuing any, any medications or modifying them, talk to your prescribing medical doctor first and run it by them. And I hope these things help. As always, check out our website, newhopechiropractic.com, and uh, hope you have a healthy day.